Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free, and do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Now, when he says stand fast, Paul in verse 1, chapter 5, verse 1, he is referring back to what we read last week. You realize that um, there's no verses. There's no chapters in the original. If you look in chapter 4, verse, uh, let's read verse 30 and 31. Nevertheless, what does the scripture say? Cast out the bondwoman and her son, for the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. Talking again about Isaac and Ishmael. So then, brethren, we are not children of the bondwomen, but of the free. Now you transition into verse 5. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty, in that freedom by which Christ has made us free. See, he's referencing back to that former verse. So we are no longer children of the bondwoman. We're no longer under the old taskmaster. And reading on in verse 3. I testify again to every man who becomes circumcised that he is a debtor to keep the whole law. Now wait, what is Paul saying? Does that mean that you have fallen from grace if you were born and because of the hospital you were born in and your parents' preference, speaking to the males among us, if you were circumcised, does that mean you cannot be saved? Is Paul speaking against the act of circumcision or is he speaking against circumcision as a means of salvation? He's speaking against it as a means of salvation because Paul of course was circumcised and Paul later circumcised Timothy so it would not be a stumbling block for the others he was preaching to. So Paul was not saying that there was anything inherently wrong with circumcision. He's saying if you people in Galatia are thinking oh I better get circumcised so I can be forgiven by Jesus you have fallen from grace. And that's a pretty strong statement. Fallen from grace is not like a theological hiccup. Fallen from grace says you who attempt to be justified by the law, you have fallen from grace. Can a person be in heaven who has fallen from grace? Well, how are we saved? We are saved by grace, through faith. So if you've fallen from grace, you're lost. So do you understand how strong the words are that Paul is using to the Galatians? Matter of fact, Galatians is probably the strongest uh, language Paul employs anywhere in any of his writings. You just look at some of the statements that he makes where he said, uh, look, listen to my words. I, Paul, am telling you, if you're hearing any other gospel, fallen from grace, who has bewitched you? I mean, Paul you know, he, he really gets on the edge of um, being as emotional in his letter as he can be. He says some pretty strong things to the Corinthians and 1 Corinthians too, but uh, this is probably the strongest. Paul was saying, if a person is circumcised as a means of thinking they're obtaining salvation, they've missed the whole point of Christ's coming. Pretty strong language. Hebrews 2, verse 14 and 15. Inasmuch then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same, speaking of Jesus, that through death he might destroy him who has the power of death, that is the devil, and release, set free, those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. What is another way that Jesus sets us free? Well, he sets us free through uh, the gospel, sets us free from sin. He sets us free um, from fear. Many people spend their lives in fear. They're always worried about dying. They don't know what the future holds. You know, when you're in Christ and you're in a saved relationship with Jesus, Christians don't die. Christians go to sleep. You have nothing to do. You, are you afraid when you go to sleep at night? You pray that prayer, if I die before I wake, you're worried? You can sleep peacefully as a Christian. I want to read something to you from the book Acts of the Apostles. Paul had ever exalted the divine law. I'm going to talk about righteousness by faith here. Paul had ever exalted the divine law. He had shown that in the law there is no power to save men from the penalty of disobedience. Wrongdoers must repent of their sins and humble themselves before God whose just wrath they have incurred by breaking his law. 
and they must also exercise faith in the blood of Christ as the only means of pardon. This is very important. She says, it is only through faith in Christ. It's the only means of pardon. The Son of God has died as their sacrifice and has ascended to heaven to stand before the Father as the advocate. By repentance and faith, they might be freed from the condemnation of sin through the grace of Christ, be enabled henceforth to render obedience to the law of God. Now that's very important. Some people think that we get grace so that we don't have to obey. When in reality, God gives us grace to obey. Have you ever heard people say, well, we're saved by grace, we don't need to obey? That's a contradiction. Paul is not saying that. He's talking in Galatians about anybody who thinks they're justified by keeping any law. Nobody's justified by keeping any law. But breaking it down a little farther, the specific problem that he's addressing is the ceremonial laws and circumcision. Um, some people have tried to use Galatians to say we don't need to keep the Sabbath day. How many times does the word Sabbath appear in the book of Galatians? Not at all. How many times does the word circumcision appear in the book? I don't know, about a dozen times, I forget, but it's quite a bit. And so the big issue, there's no question about what the big issue was there. It's talking about the ceremonial laws of Moses. It's not talking about the Ten Commandments saying we're free to break the Ten Commandments. All right, next section.